Jeden, dva, tři. Dobrý den, dobrý den svima. Dobrý den. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Josef Dvoraček. I am the economic uh, diplomat of the embassy of the Czech Republic here in Zagreb. And it's my great pleasure you know, to welcome you uh, here at uh, FAIR uh, Sleučiliště for, the, for to today's uh, networking uh, seminar related to science uh, uh, research and innovation uh, <coughs> i would like first of all you know to uh, to thank uh, very much uh, fair uh, uh, dean uh, john bilas and his team for making uh, okay is it better right thank you okay. for making you know this event uh, uh, possible we very much appreciate it and I hope that uh, we will have an um, interesting uh, session, interesting uh, seminar, and both you know, the Czech and Croatian partners will have the opportunity you know, to find out the uh, interesting ways of cooperation in very, very good uh, sector, like uh, the uh, science, uh, innovation, and research is. Um, uh, before I give the floor uh, to the, uh, His Excellency uh, Milan Havorka, Ambassador of the Czech Republic uh, to Croatia. I would like just to give you some um, technical uh, overview of uh, this morning uh, seminar, this morning session. So we will have uh, uh, all together five uh, presentations from the Czech side. There are the people you know from uh, uh, Brno uh, Technology University, uh, also from Technology Center from, from Prague, SATEC uh, from Brno, and, uh, and also uh, from, from Olomouc uh, uh, Center, it's called Catherine. Uh, then also my, uh, our, our colleague uh, will uh, do the presentation about Eli Laser Center, which is in uh, Dolny Przežany, near, near Prague. And um, about uh, after the uh, uh, first session, we will have a small, uh, small break, uh, the coffee break, so we can continue the, the, the discussion. And then after these presentations, each presentation we decided yesterday it would be actually better, you know, to uh, have, uh, if you have some uh, questions, uh, comments, uh, do it exactly after each presentation. Of course, after when we finish all the presentations, uh, we can have we can continue on this Q and A session, and then uh, we will have a, a, a common networking luncheon here next to the next to the uh, uh, hall here. And then we can also continue, you know, with this with this networking and uh, questions. Um, uh, on behalf of the ambassador, at the evening uh, tonight at the residence of the ambassador, which is in Eurevska 27, uh, Gornigrad. We would like you know to kindly invite you to the to the reception, to the residence of the ambassador. You are very welcome. Just some technical uh, things. Please know that uh, there is uh, there are some um, reconstruction going on. So it's uh, uh, sometimes could be a little challenge, you know, to if you're driving, you know, so to to get uh, to get there. So for those who will be uh, driving. So please go to Ilica and then to the uh, to the street which leads you to the Gornigrad. This is just you know the technical uh, technical technical thing. So uh, I will do the moderation of uh, of the of the seminar. So I will call each uh, uh, each each colleague who will present who will have a presentation. And uh, now, uh, without any uh, dues, I would like you know to invite uh, to the floor to give the floor to Milan Havorka, ambassador of the Czech Republic uh, to Croatia. Thank you so much. Thank you much. 
Tak. Good morning. I know that the uh, working language uh, of today's seminar is English, but I seek your indulgence uh, if I say a few words in Croatian as well. Samo da vas pozdravim. I naravno hvala puna da ste nam se pridružili ovom prilikom. Gospodine dekane, poštovani gospodine dekane, dragi prijatelju, hvala vama na lijepoj suradnji. Mi smo pričali o ovoj mogućnosti prije nekolika mjeseca i veselim se da, da smo uspjeli i vidim da imamo vrlo interesantan tim koji je spreman za, vjerujem, produktivne razgovore. So this is what I wanted to say in Croatian, once again in English, to express my sincerest uh, gratitude to the faculty of uh, electric uh, engineering and computing, uh, uh, dear friend of uh, ours, uh, Dean uh, uh, Vedran uh, Bilas. Uh, uh, I thank him for his uh, personal contribution and uh, for uh, excellent cooperations uh, we have had uh, since uh, the very beginning uh, when uh, the idea of uh, bringing us uh, together emerged. I would also like to recognize uh, the presence uh, of uh, Mr. Stasha Skniezic, uh, director uh, at the Ministry of uh, uh, Research, uh, uh, Education, uh, of the government uh, of uh, Croatia. Thank you so much uh, for being with us uh, and uh, thanks a lot uh, for your readiness uh, to meet uh, some members uh, of uh, our uh, delegation. I believe that uh, you all would uh, agree if I uh, say that uh, scientific innovation is uh, an engine of uh, human well-being. And I would also add to it uh, that uh, it is uh, a, sin a condition sine qua non for long-term prosperity. And the capacity to build a positive research uh, environment, generate uh, knowledge uh, potential, and uh, adopt uh, new technological solutions, determines uh, the quality of day-to-day -day life of citizens. And also accelerates uh, progress towards tackling uh, global challenges uh, like uh, climate change, poverty, digital inclusion. And it also influences uh, international relations and uh, supports uh, economic uh, diversification. It is only natural that uh, the Czech Republic, you know that uh, one world name of uh, our country is Czechia. As a country with uh, an outstanding industrial base. Remarkable tradition of excellence and a high quality of uh, science uh, and uh, entrepreneurial spirit. 
is interested in working with uh, friendly and uh, like-minded countries in its efforts to build uh, a prosperous, resilient, uh, and uh, dynamic uh, society. And Croatia perfectly fits for purpose. Croatia is a trusted partner. It is a partner in the European Union and uh, a strategic ally in NATO. But it is also an important economic partner in the number of uh, areas including uh, trade and uh, investment. Not to forget, and we just talked about it with Mr. Dean, it is uh, by far the, fa uh, the most uh, popular holiday destination for Czechs. In fact, uh, Czechia represents uh, the fifth uh, largest uh, market for Croatia. If, if I were asked whether there is a domain in which the two countries could and should do more, then my response would be, it is the field of research, development, and innovation. I don't want to be misunderstood. We are not starting from the from zero, from the scratch. I believe that also the Faculty of Electric Engineering and Computing uh, has a number of uh, programs uh, with uh, partners in uh, Czechia. But the point I'm making is that we all can gain a lot if we redouble our efforts to generate better understanding of what Czechs and Croats can offer each other and uh, what more we can do together bilaterally, regionally, and globally. And if we redouble our joint efforts in increasing the existing potential and in organizing a number of events, not for the sake of having them, but simply to promote networking and contacts uh, between uh, the universities, uh, 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 research uh, uh, institutions uh, of the two countries. And this is what the, the scientific diplomacy is about. This is uh, what the, one of the priorities uh, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of uh, the Czech uh, Republic is about. This is also why the ministry is being uh, represented uh, by uh, Olga Kalinova. And uh, this is also what the, the activities uh, uh, of the embassy of uh, uh, the Czech Republic in Zagreb are aiming at. Needless to say that uh, we remain at your disposal. We would uh, be more than happy if uh, after the seminar we have uh, feedback from you, if uh, you are kind to share ideas, uh, suggestions uh, or proposals uh, that emerged from uh, your bilateral discussions. And uh, definitely we would be more than happy to be your partners uh, in your endeavors uh, to establish uh, 
new contacts uh, or uh, strengthen the existing ones. And uh, Mr. Dean, if you agree, uh, I'd be more than happy if we can get together to take stock of all the discussions we are going uh, uh, to have uh, today and uh, we put in place uh, a sound uh, follow-up uh, process. So once again, thank you so much uh, for your kind invitation. Definitely thanks a lot to my team at the embassy, Josef and uh, Tanya, for all what they have done uh, to bring us uh, together. Sve najbolje. I naravno, i ja ostajem na raspalaganju cijeli dan, ne samo za ručak, ali vjerujem da ćemo imati priliku se malo družiti večeras u rezidencije veleposlanika Republike Češke u Zagrebu. Još jednom hvala na pažnju. Thank you so much for your attention. Perfect. Hvala, hvala puno vele poslaniku. So I would like just to add that during the Q&A or if you have any questions, you know, and you prefer, you know, to use your native Croatian language or Czech, of course. We also have here, you know, our colleague, you know, Alen Novosad, who is ready, you know, to translate. Sometimes it helps. And by the way, we also prepared, you know, some information about the Czech participants, some short presentation you can find it you know in Croatian you know next uh, on, the, on, on the table next door so now I would like you know to uh, invite uh, to give the floor you know to uh, Professor Vedran Bilas Dean of the Facultet uh, Elektrotechnike i Računarstva. Hvala. Dobro jutro i dobrodošli na Fakultet elektrotehnike i računarstva sveučilišta u Zagrebu. Drago mi je ovdje pozdraviti njegovu ekscelenciju, veleposlanika gospodina Milana Hovorku, njegove suradnike iz veleposlanstva Republike Češke i zahvaliti im na suradnji i pripremi ovoga seminara. Također mi je veliko zadovoljstvo pozdraviti i uvažene kolege iz Republike Češke koji će danas predstaviti svoje institucije. Drago mi je da je s nama danas i gospodin Skenžić iz Ministarstva znanosti, obrazovanja i mladih. Također imamo tu i predstavnike Hrvatske agencije Hamak Bikro, člana uprave. S nama su danas kolege sa drugih, naravno sa sveučilišta u Zagrebu i ovog fakulteta, ali sa drugih sveučilišta. Vidimo ovdje dekana Ferita iz Osijeka, pa i njega pozdravljam. Možda niste primijetili, ali imamo kameru na sredini dvorane, omogućili smo i prijenos ovog seminara, pa danas evo pozdravljam i kolegice i kolege iz Rijeke, iz Splita, Osijeka, Dubrovnika, za koje vjerujem da će se pridružiti u nekom trenutku i poslušati naše današnje predavanja. Tu su i uvaženi kolege, ravnatelji dvaju velikih instituta, instituta Ruđer Bošković, instituta za fiziku, i evo ispričavam se ako nisam prijatelj, pozdravio sve. Za one koji su se zabrinuli da ću govoriti samo na hrvatskom, evo sad ću reći nešto i na engleskom. Ja se nadam da su i naši gosti iz Češke nas dobro razumijeli, jer su te naše slavenske veze sigurno vrlo jake, negdje duboko. So, good morning and thank you for coming at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing of the University of Zagreb. I am really thankful for the collaboration with the Embassy of Zagreb Uh, the Czech Republic and, and the team of uh, our distinguished guest, uh, uh, His Excellency uh, Ambassador uh, Hovorka. Uh, I'm also greeting other guests from Ministry of Science, uh, from, from Hamak Bikro, from our institutes, other universities, and of course from the universities and the institutes from, from uh, Czech Republic. Um, I, I truly believe that uh, there is a lot of uh, potential, and I agree with uh, Mr. H uh, Hovorka, to increase our collaboration and uh, let this be uh, another another step uh, towards uh, uh, towards that that goal so uh, i will try to briefly uh, introduce uh, especially to our guests uh, my view of what is happening in croatia today most of of this presentation will be about this university and and the faculty but you will have also some some i guess interesting information 
about what is happening in the science and innovation in Croatia at the moment. Uh, let me start with the past. Uh, you know that uh, uh, Czechia was one of the three uh, European countries which started uh, uh, the high engineering education, high technical edu education sometimes in the 18th century, 18th century. It was Germany, France, and Czechia at that time. And you know that many Croats believed uh, in so-called joint European market at that time. It was 100, more than 100 years ago. It looks, looked a little bit different than today, but it was a kind of joint European market. And at that time, a lot of people from Croatia, I mean, a lot, those who could uh, studied in Czechia, in Prague, uh, as well. So we have a, a lot of, of joint uh, connections from the past. Uh, uh, I'm a professor of electrical engineering. I'm an electrical engineer, but I'm also a Dalmatian. So the next few slides will reflect my identity. So <coughs> probably you don't know for Mr. Karel Varhanek, who actually uh, changed the way of living in Dalmatia and Istria by investing in more than 10 fish processing uh, factories around the Croatian coast. It was more than 100 years ago. Uh, this gentleman is also very interesting because he was one of the two main advocates of starting uh, high technical education in Croatia by the end of the 19th century. And at that time, uh, uh, it wasn't uh, successful, so he moved to Brno. And uh, according to some Croatian sources, he was a rector of the uh, Brno University of Technology at the beginning of the 20th century. But I found this information on the website of the Faculty of Civil Engineering, Brno University of Technology, where he was dean uh, 1914, uh, 1915. So uh, our high uh, technical education here in Zagreb started in 1919 with high technical school, which then entered the University of Zagreb in 20 in 1926. So we had a lot of, to, uh, of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of memories of it. And probably this is not the most important from some of us, but that you know that some things live forever, and Hajduk is one of them. So back in 1911, some students from Split learned about football and brought that balloon to Split where it lives forever. So let me start with what is Croatia today. I apologize for not, okay, for the, for the format of the presentation. So Croatia is a small country with 3.9 or less million people at the moment, and it has nine public universities, a lot of public universities in Croatia. So we are today at the University of Zagreb, which is uh, uh, the oldest and the, 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 the biggest one, and I will talk about it, but just, uh, you, you, you can take a look at the Croatian map uh, where the other university, universities are. So as I said, uh, Dean of Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computing and IT from Osijek is here. So probably during the, the, uh, the lunch or, or afterwards you can talk to him as well. There are universities on the Croatian coast, coast uh, um, Rijeka and Split being the, the largest. And there are 25 uh, public uh, universities, uh, public institutes in Croatia. And among them, uh, I, I would say uh, two mo most interesting for the, for the guests today and for the collaboration in the field of science and uh, of STEM, let's say. It's Institute Ruzje Boschkovic. Uh, Dr. Smith is here, uh, 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 the director. And the other one is Institute of Physics in Zagreb. And also uh, Dr. Barisic is here at, as a... Uh, as uh, director of the of the institute, so they are the uh, the best uh, uh, Croatian uh, uh, research institutions in field of STEM. Uh, talking about uh, bilateral collaboration, uh, we have a, a Croatian Science Foundation. We also invited them. I don't know if some of of representatives. Uh, so there is a rep representative of the um, Croatian Science Foundation. And uh, the, our foundation, as well as the Czech Science Foundation, is a member of VIV, 
uh, where the uh, across European initiative to fund and support excellent international research projects, and there, this is a, a kind of a platform for bilateral uh, collaboration among others uh, between uh, Croatia and uh, and Czech Republic. And now we are coming to to some data about uh, participation of Croatia and EU framework prog programs, which is not so good. I didn't. Uh, want to show the, the other picture which shows that we are at the, at the end of the, of the, uh, of the row of 28 or 20, 28 uh, members of, of, uh, of the EU. So we have a lot of to improve, but uh, I think that uh, this is a, an important uh, uh, picture to see uh, at, at which topics uh, of uh, previous uh, framework programs Croatia has part participated uh, the most. And you, you have a, a brief look at, uh, at the numbers of our participation in, in the um, actual um, uh, research framework program of the European Union. We can, of course, discuss, and you can take a look at the statistics if, if you want to. And this is also interesting, and I wanted to show. These are the countries uh, which uh, are uh, partners in, uh, uh, in consortia of, of the projects uh, where Croatia participates in, in the framework programs. And this is the first, I don't know, 10 or 15. And if you take a look at, uh, at the lower score, so Czechia is, at the, I think, at the 21st place. So Czechia is a, is a partner to Croatian uh, institu institutions, not only Croatian, but the others where Croatian institutions uh, participate, is on the 21st position. So in, in my opinion, it could, be, it could be much better if we know each other better, if we... Uh, if we communicate uh, a little bit better and if we offer opportunities to, to each other, which I believe there are a lot of, of opportunities. So what is, happen is happening recently in Croatia? Many good things are happening here. And this is the best time in last more than 50 years to, to do business in Croatia. So a lot of uh, around 1 billion of, of uh, US dollars uh, invested per year in Croatian startups. So Croatian high-tech scene is really, really strong. We have two unicorns recently, one in um, uh, IT and the other one is in electrical mobility. Uh, so talking about Rimac, uh, he, I mean the company produces one of the, of the uh, uh, fastest cars, which is probably not uh, interesting for uh, researchers. I don't know who can buy it uh, as a researcher. But it is interesting that a lot of our engineers and a lot of our research projects are connected to, to, to I mean, our engineers, our alumni work for Rimac, and a lot of our research efforts are uh, directed uh, in, uh, in the field of uh, power electronics, uh, power management, uh, uh, and in general, electric uh, mobility. And we have, each year in last uh, decade, we have uh, at least a couple of uh, companies recognized as the new, new companies recognized as the fastest growing company, uh, companies in the European market. So it's a good time uh, to be in Croatia and to do uh, business with Croatian SMEs and Croatian uh, startup as well as the Croatian research community. Now let me say a few things about the University of Zagreb. So it was founded in 1669. It is the largest, the oldest, very comprehensive, having 31 faculty. We are one of them. There are 12 technical. We are one of them. There are three art academies, around 8,000 academic staff, 65,000 students. And if you take a relative look at the, the, the whole nine uh, universities in Zagreb, 50% of all students studying at public universities in Croatia study at the University of Zagreb. University of Zagreb also has University Computing Center, uh, which is the strongest, very, um, very internationally active um, um, uh, computation uh, infrastructure, and they usually participate in international projects as well. Uh, the director is not with us today, but he told me that he's very proud of his collaboration with uh, uh, Masaryk University in, uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, if you take a look at our faculty, uh, we have uh, around 200 professors, which is a huge number. Uh, we have uh, around 4,000 students at all levels. All our programs uh, given in English as well. We have 
pretty strong Erasmus exchange, but this is one of the things that I would like to see much stronger. We participate in the European Joint Masters programs. At the moment, we are, uh, we are active in three of such. This is a very, very good experience for us. We uh, produce, let's say, uh, more than uh, 450 masters of engineering per year and 50 doctors of engineering per day, and I might say, uh, per, per uh, year, and I must say that most of them stay in Croatia nowadays and work for Croatian high-tech industry. And if you would like to take a message from this side, that would be we would like and we are uh, working on increasing mobilities at all levels, at student levels, researcher levels, and professor levels. And I believe that short mobilities would be a strong uh, tool for uh, getting uh, much closer uh, between our institutions and then producing more uh, high quality uh, project proposals. So please let me know if any, any of you would be interested in increasing mobility. We have uh, 12 divisions. Uh, at the, our faculty, and I bolded those who already have uh, collaboration with some of partners from uh, Czech Republic. So it, as you can see, uh, we, we are really comprehensive as a faculty of electrical engineering computing. We are covering fields from mathematics, physics, to basics of electrical engineering, uh, uh, power engineering, um, communications, uh, uh, computer engineering, electronics, electronic systems, and uh, uh, several fields of computing as well. Uh, so colleagues are here and they will be uh, around. Again, our Vice Dean for Research is here as well. Thomas Love, please raise your hand. So you can contact him if you would like to, to learn something about it more. Uh, so what ab about our research, publication and projects? Uh, this is the uh, age index uh, of our institution if you want to, to know it. We have more than 250 researchers paid directly from our projects. We have around 200 projects active at the moment. And in that terms, we are the most active higher education institution in Croatia. If you take a look at uh, what institutions, institutions participating in the uh, uh, Horizon program at the moment, uh, Institute Jurjur Boschkovic and us, uh, we are the best performing uh, Croatian uh, institutions at the moment we have more than 10, I think 13 or 14 uh, Horizon uh, 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 2020, Horizon Europe ongoing projects. Uh, at the national level, we are also most de desirable partners for the cause of applied research or industrial research financed by European uh, cohesion funds. And uh, the data I've already mentioned that since uh, 2015, uh, we had uh, uh, around 15 international projects with partners from Czech Republic, and we believe that there is a, a lot of potential for strengthening it. And at the end, uh, I've said a little bit about education research and at the end of, about technology uh, transfer. So uh, as a faculty, we have uh, an office for uh, supporting uh, research and innovation. We also established an innovation center called Nikola Tesla. And at uh, Nikola Tesla Innovation Center, there is a program for uh, uh, accelerating deep tech uh, uh, entrepreneur entrepreneurial uh, projects, and we are proud that uh, the, the, the ideas are re really strong, uh, the teams are really strong and multidisciplinary, and this is the best performing program at, in Croatia at the moment, and we are also interested in strengthening our links with the technology transfer offices and uh, other similar facilities in, um, in the Czech Republic. And I believe that it will be ma ma more interesting for us than transferring knowledge from the Western countries because we have some similar, uh, similar uh, history uh, 100 years ago and unfortunately 50 years ago as well. Uh, that, that would be all for me. Uh, sorry if I was uh, uh, quick but uh, there's a short time for, for this presentation. We are already behind the schedule. So thank you for your attention and uh, have a fruitful uh, seminar today. Enjoy your stay in Zagreb. Thank you. Mr. Dean. Um, it was right, you know, it's, uh, it's actually, as I mentioned, it's the first event in the area of science and of course, like the Croatian partners, also the Czech partners. We are very interested, you know, in this collaboration. And so it's, this seminar, it's a, I would say, a very good start. 
have to you know, begin this uh, potential long-term cooperation. Because we, in the past, we, as, as to the mentioned economic diplomacy, we focused on other uh, sectors of industry, agriculture, etc. But the science, this is actually the first event we are organizing. And the reason why we are doing this is exactly as the Dean mentioned, that there is a potential you know, for the, for the uh, mutual, uh, very good uh, collaboration. You know. So uh, now I would like you know, to invite to the floor uh, uh, Stasia Skniesic from the Ministry of uh, Science, uh, Education and Youth of Croatian Republic. He will present something. And also, if, if you, by the way, if you have any, any comments or questions to Dean uh, Villas, it, it, it's possible, as I mentioned in the beginning, that we can, if you have any questions, we can do it. So, Asha, for you. Thank you very much. Dobro jutro, dobar dan svima. Ja sam Staša Skenžić, načelnik sektora za međunarodnu suradnju i evropske poslove i doista mi je zadovoljstvo što sam pozvan i što mogu sudjelovati na ovome seminaru. Of course, I will switch in English and I will say a few words. Well, Dean mentioned everything about the Croatia and about the Croatian scientific uh, system. Very good overview, thank you very much. And I will just share with you some thoughts about why these kind of seminars are important. So first of all, I would like to share one thought by Louis Pasteur. Once he said that science has no homeland because knowledge belongs to all mankind. And these kind of seminars, these kind of events is a great platform for the exchange of scientific experience, discussion of current scientific issues and promising areas of research. I strongly believe that this conference, this event, will open new perspectives and foster the exchange of some excellent ideas. Bringing people together around common interests where everyone sees common benefits is one of the best foundations for establishing good and constructive relationship, or relationship over a longer period. Scientific cooperation has the power to build trust among people since it provides an alternative path for an exchange of ideas, a path that is un and should be free from ideological and political influences. Moreover, it is through cooperation in research and innovation that the mobility of researchers is truly enabled. And let me conclude by extending my gratitude to the organizers of this event, and I'm confident that it will provide all of you with an excellent opportunity to acquire useful knowledge, and I wish you every success in applying this new knowledge in your work and everyday lives. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Stasha. So um, uh, now uh, I would like you know, to invite to the floor uh, my uh, colleague from the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, Vansky Poslova, Republika Češke, Olga Kalinova. She is my colleague. Uh, uh, you know, when I'm back at headquarters and the ministry, I'm also from this department. So it's called the Department of Economic and Scientific Diplomacy. And Olga will present some information about uh, what we are doing in this area at the, at the ministry in Prague. Please. Okay, good morning, everybody. When I, when I see the hall, it's actually for me uh, the same when I see the diplomats. It's a lot of manpower, actually. <laughs> so let's put it a little bit of a women element on, on that, because science is actually also very masculine. But I hope that one day more women will come also to this sphere. So, dear Mr. Dean, dear Mr. Ambassador, Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome to the seminar. I am very glad that you can be here. My name is Olga Kalinova. I represent Science Diplomacy Unit at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I'm here to uh, give you a quick overview of what is Czech Science Diplomacy. Um, first of all, some basic information about Czechia. I, 
I'm sure that you, everybody knows about Czechia, um, that it's a, a middle-sized country in the center of Europe, uh, that we have more than 10 million uh, people, like population, language is Czech, the currency is Czech crown, the political system, parliamentary democracy, and we are a member of uh, many uh, international organizations such as European Union, NATO, WTO, OECD, etc. But that's a little bit annoying, you know. Let's put it another way. What are the strengths of Czechia? You know, we love beer, actually. And in Czechia, you can have a beer bath therapy because there we have so much beer, so we can <laughs> even have a bath, actually, in the beer. The mushroom picking. Um, Czechs are lovers of uh, mushroom picking, and every man and every woman, I think, uh, pick it not only because they uh, love it like food, for, uh, it's food for free actually, but they enjoy this time also uh, in nature and they, they actually love it. And Czech, it's a unique language because only in this language you have the letter R. <laughs> no other language has this letter. And sometimes we have very complicated uh, combinations of words like strč prstka skrk that there is no bubble, actually. So you see that uh, it's a very unique, um, our country. But also at Czechia, it's a country of inventions. You know that uh, uh, the contact lenses actually were invented in Czech Republic. Uh, Otto Wichterle, who became famous for a contact lenses invention, he actually, we can be grateful ladies for them because uh, he invented uh, stockings, women's tights made from artificial fibers, which replaced uh, the luxury silk in the middle of 20th century. Uh, the word robot, you know that the word robot, not the machine, but the word, it's actually from a Czech word robota, which means forced labor. And of course, I hope you know it, but uh, Antonin Holly, the scientist from the Institute of Organic uh, uh, Chemistry and Biochemistry of the Czech Academy of Science, was involved uh, on the de development of antivirals that are effective against a number of viruses, such as uh, AIDC, et, et cetera, and hepatitis B. So we have a great scientists. Tradition of science is very rich, and actually that's what, that's what science diplomacy is doing. Uh, our current government decided in uh, 2019 and uh, reaffirmed it in uh, 2021 in its program declaration that there is a need to support Czech science, R&D, and to promote it abroad. So the big role was granted to science diplomacy, which helps uh, actually with the internationalization of Czech R&D sphere, R&D institutions, large research infrastructures, uh, universities, and also innovative companies with some uh, very unique solutions, and mainly startups and spin-offs. So, what it means in practice? Uh, there are several le levels of coordination in Czech Republic for this science diplomacy. Um, the main one is Interministerial Steering Group. It's the Council for Research, Development and Innovation. It's chaired by, uh, in the government office by the Minister of Science, Research and Innovations. Then we have uh, Minister of Education, Youth and Sports, Minister of Industry and Trade, Czech Science Foundation, Technology Agency of the Czech Republic, and Czech Academy of Science. This is the first level. It's a national level. But at the level of the MFA, the coordination structure is organized through our science diplomacy unit within the Department of Economic and Science Diplomacy. Uh, it was created one, year, one and a half year ago, so it's actually new. But uh, the reason for this decision, why we are in this economic diplomacy, it's actually uh, the reason that we need to combine the support for Czech science with the effective instruments uh, used for support of Czech companies within this economic diplomacy. That's why we are here. And finally, the implementation of Czech science diplomacy is ensured by a network of 115 embassies and consulate general all around the world in more than 90 countries uh, which are managed actually from the MFA headquarters. So in this network, we have four science diplomats uh, in priority countries such as Taiwan, Israel, 
US and in Brussels. And then we have around 100 economic diplomats who have this science diplomacy in their portfolio, such as Mr. Dvořáček, you know, Mr. Dvořáček. <laughs> so thank you. Sterč perskou. Thank you for that. And what actually, what are actually the strengths of Czechia? What, what do we promote in Czech science diplomacy? So uh, I will brief you, briefly give, give you um, um, the overview of, uh, of Czech uh, system. And actually it's uh, the same that you can have uh, in a catalog, in the catalog uh, which you can find in printed version uh, in the entry of this hall. So Czechia is known for its higher ed education. Uh, in Czechia we have 26 public, two states and 28 private universities. They are providing education in all relevant areas. In these universities, we are, have currently more than 300,000 students, including uh, 54,000 international students. Okay. Research in Czechia, uh, research is uh, performed at universities and at the institutes of Czech Academy of Science. Uh, the Czech Academy of Science has um, 54 institutes with some 11,000 employees and uh, their basic mission is to conduct basic research in a broad spectrum of natural, technical and social sciences. And actually, uh, Czech Academy Science, of Sciences supports also education of young researchers and doctoral study programs. And they are open, of course, to some joint projects uh, and research mobility schemes. We promote also large-scale research infrastructures in Czechia territory. What is that? Uh, it's founded by Czech government and they provide a unique uh, state-of-art facilities and equipment that enable uh, to do advanced research, both basic and applied technology development and innovation. These uh, infrastructures are also open to collaboration with international partners from R&D institutions and innovative uh, companies. Many of them uh, already works in English language, so it's, it's uh, very, very good. And I'm glad that we have one of the such uh, infrastructure here with us. It's Eli Eric. It's actually um, European Research Infrastructure Consortium, Eric. And Czechia participates in altogether 17 these Erics. And one of them, Eli, uh, Eli, is uh, on Czech territory. It's, uh, the most powerful laser facility globally that we can that can be utilized for basic and applied research and uh, uh, Ms. Shelka is here to present us uh, um, more information about that here you can see the map of this uh, large research infrastructures it's actually on the whole territory of the Czech Republic uh, in Dolny Brezhany near Prague Eli beam lines and uh, the most of them are in Prague, near Prague, or in Brno. But also, of course, in Olomouc, in Ostrava, in Plzeň. Uh, nuclear research is also, for example, uh, near Prague, in Erzesh, uh, etc. And then we have uh, something that we call a smart specialization of our regions. So actually, our uh, government uh, adopted a national research and innovation strategy for smart specialization. That means that every region in our country has a specialization for some of the domain of specialization. Uh, for example, Liberec in our, uh, it's Lib Liberec region in our country is very famous for nanotechnologies, etc. We can, uh, uh, we can talk about uh, much more time, but here are this domain of specialization which are interested in in Czech Republic actually. So, what are actually the diplomatic services that MFA can offer to international partners? Our science, our economic and science diplomats, and of, of course us, our unit as a back office for them, we provide uh, information about, about Czech R&D system and contacts to relevant actors. We gather information about R&D in Czechia and abroad and pass it to relevant institutions in our country. We seek for research and technology contacts. 
we support communication with foreign partners, we assist to B2G meetings, and not but, uh, last but not least, our diplomats are organizing projects of economic and science diplomacy, such as today's conference, which helps our uh, partners to get together. It can be also incoming mission, it can be inspiration mission, it can be sexual presentation, networking events, it can be also the participation of some fairs, etc. Uh, last year, or oh, this year actually, we organized uh, around 40 R&D projects in sectors such as ICT, startups, cybersecurity, AI, quantum, life sciences, biotechnologies, semiconductors, hydrogen technologies, nanotechnologies, aerospace, etc. All this is coordinated actually through our uh, science diplomacy unit. Some uh, pictures, how it can look like. This is from our embassy uh, in Stockholm. It's actually a visit of Czech delegation headed by our deputy minister, Jiří Kozák, to Novatron, which is a fusion testing facility of the campus of the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. <coughs> or this is a visit of Czech delegation to Station F in Paris. It's Europe's largest startup incubator. Uh, it was a part of mission um, of Czech artificial intelligence researchers to France. This is uh, a group of Czech experts visiting a German company Quantum Optics Jena in the framework of research expert mission in the field of cybersecurity and optical infrastructure. Uh, and this, because we are not cooperating, cooperating only with developed, developed countries, but also with developing countries, and for example, Africa. It's a presentation of Czech innovative solutions in, Af in Rwanda, in Africa. Uh, you can see our wonderful uh, children printing themselves on the Czech 3D printer Prusa. And actually one of the outputs of this mission was that uh, the leader of Czech company, Mr. Prusa, invented a way to recycle plastic bottles into filament for 3D printers. And also we have incoming missions, you know that EUSPA, uh, the European Union Agency for Space Program, is based in Prague. And this is incoming mission of our Indian colleagues uh, to Prague. So that's all for me. Maybe it's an inspiration for a Croatian system also to have a science diplomacy. I wish you good luck for today's conference and thank you for your attention. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Thank you very much. By the way, all these uh, presentations of uh, Czech uh, colleagues, Czech partners will be available, so we'll be very happy you know, to share it with you. And also, of course, uh, your presentation, Mr. Dean, would be really appreciated also. Yeah, so now uh, we will start the presentation of the uh, Czech guests, Czech partners. I would like you know, to, to start you know, with, uh, with Mr. Mr. Haze of uh, uh, Brno uh, Technology University. So it will be also, I think, very interesting. So after the presentation, as I said, if you have any questions in Czech, English, or Croatian, you are very welcome. So. Okay, good morning, uh, everybody, Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Dean, uh, dear colleagues, guests. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to be a part of this uh, session and of this seminar. Uh, maybe to start a new uh, possible ways of cooperation between our university and your university's institutes, companies. Uh, I am here to represent uh, our university, Brno University of Technology, uh, which is the leading uh, technology university in Czechia. Uh, of course, we can t 
talk also about the universe, Czech uh, Technical University in Prague. Um, and um, today I'm going to talk uh, a bit about the uh, Czech uh, semiconductor ecosystem, uh, what, what we do, what we offer, uh, what would we would like to do with you. Uh, since I'm also the vice president in our Czech National Semiconductor Cluster, uh, we can also discuss in Q&A or the later discussions about the possibility how to cooperate with this kind of institution, uh, which represents uh, almost 40 uh, institutes like universities, research institutes, uh, SMEs, large companies, uh, and many other stakeholders uh, included into the uh, semiconductor cluster, uh, semiconductor ecosystem in Czechia. Uh, but back to our university, um, uh, Mr. Dean mentioned the history of, of the faculty and the university. Our university uh, this year celebrates 125 years uh, of its uh, first uh, uh, establishment. So yeah, we have uh, a long tradition of, of uh, technology uh, education and, and training and research. Uh, our semiconductor <coughs> technology hub at, at the university uh, comprises of, of uh, academics, uh, students, experts, researchers uh, from uh, these uh, four faculties. Uh, the, the main branch uh, is represented, uh, represented uh, by uh, our, my department, Department of Microelectronics at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering Communication. But we have also uh, colleagues uh, at the, at the uh, another uh, faculties like uh, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering Faculty of Information Technology and the Central European Institute of Technology, which will be uh, presented by my colleagues. Uh, so uh, I will skip the few slides. Uh, I will leave it to them. Um, for, so for the, um, let's say, the whole uh, semiconductor value chain, we can split our expertise among these four faculties and institutes. Uh, most is done, as I mentioned, at our department, like uh, semiconductor technology and materials, and as well, of course, the chip design. We have more than 25 years, maybe 30 years uh, uh, of experience and, and within the uh, projects education uh, in this field. Uh, yeah, uh, semiconductor technology and materials it will be more represented uh, by, by my colleagues. Uh, chip programming and digital design uh, is done also at the Faculty of Information Technology and, and <coughs> Physics of Semiconductors and, and uh, evaluation of semiconductors uh, is, is proceed at the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, all of these faculties are located uh, almost in one location, Technology Park in Brno, where our many other companies uh, in uh, ICT uh, and many others. So uh, it's quite, let's say, Western-like um, uh, ecosystem uh, within this era. Uh, yeah, here we have the more, let's say, detailed uh, uh, list of all our activities we are dealing with uh, at, at the certain uh, faculty. Uh, I will not mention all of them, but uh, what I want to point out uh, is that uh, thanks to our long-term expertise uh, in this area, uh, we are a very important partner for uh, other universities, not just only in Czechia, but in the European region as well, of course, thanks to our also membership in uh, in European uh, European alliances uh, uh, dealing with semiconductors, like uh, Silicon Europe Alliance. Uh, we of course uh, closely cooperate with Silicon Saxony. Uh, maybe you know about the 
investment of, of Taiwanese uh, companies, DSMC, into the FAPs uh, in Dresden. So, of course, that's very important for, from our point of view uh, because of the, let's say, employees and possible uh, cooperation uh, in, in, this, in this FAP as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, at our department, uh, Department of Microelectronics, where I'm heading, uh, we are dealing mostly with the sensor applications and other technology, of course, designing of, of uh, chips and verification. And uh, we also deal with the space applications, uh, chip design and, and implementation of various types of uh, electronic circuits. Uh, the next group is dealing with uh, electronic components, uh, packaging, mounting technology, and many others. Um, for students, of course, we offer uh, study programs uh, dealing with uh, uh, microelectronics technology and things like that. And uh, this year, we have also accredited uh, brand new study programs related more to, to uh, modern semiconductor technologies and chip design uh, in bachelor, in master, in, in Czech, uh, Czech language. And we uh, are preparing uh, these uh, study programs also to be ready in, in uh, English next year. So this would be another area where we can find a common uh, area of, of uh, collaboration maybe to prepare or agree on some kind of joint uh, degree, master, let, for instance, uh, study program, how to exchange students. Mr. Dean mentioned the uh, uh, Euro, uh, the, the Erasmus, Erasmus program. Of course, we are involved in this program as well with a long-term uh, experience. So this, this could be uh, another possibility of collaboration. Uh, yeah, just I will skip these slides. They are going in more details what we are, what we are dealing with. Uh, uh, thanks to our expertise and uh, our uh, membership in Euro practice, uh, Euro practice project, we are able not just only designing chips, but we are also to fabricate them. So we pre we prepare all the project documentation and then. Uh, we send it to IMEC in Belgium, so that then we get the, the chips uh, and to proceed all the evaluation and and to pass to our uh, partners, industrial partners, to, to our customers uh, for the real life. Uh, yeah, we have some uh, some uh, uh, equipment and labs where we. Uh, work on these projects and maybe teach uh, our students in these areas. Uh, I think I can skip this. Uh, we can, s uh, we can uh, discuss it in, uh, later on. Uh, so for the last, let's say, 25 years approximately, we have designed uh, more than about 12, 12 maybe 13 different uh, chips, mostly for biomedical purposes, uh, sensor applications, digital applications, and uh, six, seven years ago, we started with the space applications. So all of these so-called layouts or, or chips uh, were designed at our department. Uh, I would like to shortly uh, mention uh, uh, the Institute of Physical Engineering at the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, they are mostly dealing with uh, ultra thin films and multi layer surfaces and thin films uh, nanotechnology. Of course, uh, they have a lot of uh, labs and equipment uh, uh, important uh, uh, for these purposes. Also, I have to mention Brno is the well known region for the electron microscopy. One third of worldwide production of electron microscopes come from Brno. There are companies like Fermo Fischer, Tescan, Delonke Instrument dealing with uh, uh, 
designing and fabrication of electron microscopes. So uh, this is the, uh, another quite strength of, of our region. Yeah, about the SATEC, uh, uh, my colleagues will be talking about, so I will skip this as well. And yeah, we have a lot of uh, cooperation, of course, with uh, our industrial partners. Two, maybe three years ago, uh, we started a huge uh, cooperation with Taiwanese uh, universities and companies. So now we have um, uh, two, maybe three projects uh, with uh, Taiwanese universities and companies. And uh, thanks to the whole ecosystem worldwide, we are also involved in the European projects. Yeah, a lot of uh, universities worldwide. And uh, I'd like to point this, this slide because we also uh, contributing to uh, CHIPS JU uh, starting from CHIPS Act, uh, um, which has been approved uh, one, maybe two years ago. So uh, we are involved in many, many consortium, uh, in international consortium projects uh, uh, dealing with the semiconductor value chain to, uh, let's say, uh, improve the knowledge um, and skills uh, in semiconductors and, and to, let's say, increase the number of graduates in this area because we know that the gap for the employees in this uh, in this field is quite huge, so this this project would help us uh, in this uh, in this area as well. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, listening, and thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dotsent. Um, I know that uh, you, Mr. Dean, you had uh, some question in when, we, when we met earlier about the U.S. investment on, on SEMI, you know, in, in Rajna for Rajjem. So um, university in Brno, they are also involved with this. So maybe I think it's a good topic for the, uh, for, for, for the discussion. discussion. Yes, of course, here as well, uh, interesting that the topic uh, our faculty lead creation Formation of Croatian Center of Competence in uh, Semiconductors for the e EU Chip Act as well. And we also have uh, a very strong, a couple of very strong groups here involved in, in uh, chip design and some colleagues interested in MEMS design. So th this is one of the topics at the top of our list today. Yeah, yeah. We can discuss it later. yeah sure. Thank you. Okay. So, Perso, before, before the uh, short break, I, w I would like, not now, not now, <laughs> I would like to invite, you know, the uh, colleagues from uh, Central of SATEC, which is the Central, um, Central European Institute of Technology, also from Brno. Please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Um, thank you, Mr. Dean, for having us here today. Um, I'm also coming from Brno University of Technology, but uh, I'm having two hats. Uh, uh, I'm also representing uh, SATEC, uh, which is uh, international, uh, no, international, national center for uh, for many things. I will be talking about as well. Uh, the talk is split into two. Uh, I will first ten minutes I spent on introducing SATEC in general, and uh, last maybe ten minutes, uh, Professor Václav will be talking about artificial intelligence and uh, some other interesting topic uh, which we do in SATEC. Um, <coughs> so, established in 2011 with structural funds. Uh, Eli Beam was already mentioned here today uh, as one of the largest investment in Czech science and technology. SATEC was the second largest investment in Czech, uh, in Czech science and technology uh, after, after Eli. Uh, established with six partners. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Ian mentioned Masaryk University and uh, VUT two largest one, two other universities from Brno. Uh, Brno is, by the way, one of the uh, very um, big uh, student city in Czech Republic, about 70,000 students, uh, 65, 70,000 changing. Uh, after Prague uh, is also uh, the kind of second center in R&D uh, intensive companies and, and science as well. So these six uh, uh, partners for universities and two research institutes uh, put heads together and established SATEC um, with initial funding about 210 million euros. Um, 
and uh, the initial idea was to run it uh, basically as a source of uh, of uh, shared instrument instruments. Uh, we have uh, 14 core facilities. Uh, I will mention one or two today. Uh, and uh, uh, also uh, the other reason was uh, to establish as a kind of uh, a synergy between uh, different uh, groups. So we have groups from uh, brain science and the molecular biology uh, up to nanotechnology and so on, uh, running you know joint uh, programs in PhDs and, and so on. So. Uh, also, uh, slightly different from the other Czech institutes, uh, we run it uh, pretty much on the basis of like maybe maybe Max Planck, uh, where the research group is the key holder of excellence. Uh, there is no hereditary uh, kind of uh, uh, dependency when the research group is uh, finished. The, the whole program is finished, and we look for another uh, key people who can take over. Quite large by Czech standard, about 1,400 employees. Uh, uh, out of which is about 500 in SATEC um, <coughs> that actually are, uh, they are not full-time equivalent, they are uh, heads. Uh, it comes to about uh, roughly 800, 700, uh, 900 uh, full-time equivalent. Uh, <coughs> international, 45 countries uh, joining SATEC. Uh, in SATEC uh, beauty, we actually have more than 24, uh, now we have about 28 uh, nationalities. Uh, Unfortunately, I must say that I couldn't find anybody from Croatia. Uh, hopefully, it will change after after this talk, <laughs> maybe. Um, we have, um, I already mentioned, six, uh, eight research areas uh, in uh, SATEC VUT, uh, the Brno University of Technology, which is, uh, uh, depends what kind of methodology you use, but uh, the largest, or the second largest after the Prague Technical University. <coughs> uh, so we uh, run uh, the advanced nanotechnologies and advanced materials, and from about two years ago, we started a new uh, research group, industrial uh, cybernetics and instru uh, instrumentation system integration, which Professor Václavík will be talking about in a, in a minute. Uh, the other, the other uh, parts are mostly at Masaryk University and dealing with structural biology, genomics, and so on, and they have their own research facilities. Um, I should have actually mentioned in previous slides that all the research facilities are open access. Uh, they are available to everybody in Czech Republic. They are actually designed to be open 24-7, and they are open for researchers not only from Czech Republic, but also from abroad. Uh, we have a lot of uh, scientists coming even from from UK, uh, because there is direct flight to Brno, uh, but a uh, lot of people from BNI is com coming to us, and so from Dresden and so on. So um, by, if you need some of this, by all means, um, uh, you can actually acquire about it later as well. We can talk about it. Um, uh, the, uh, these are the three research areas. I will just very briefly go through the smiling people, the smiling faces. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the, um, uh, we are looking for people uh, by their merit. Uh, we are not necessarily limited as the faculty typically is uh, limited by kind of study programs. Um, uh, we uh, do mostly science and uh, R&D. Uh, and uh, the first uh, group in nano and micro technologies is about eight scientists. Uh, some of them are very distinguished. Uh, um, some of them are you know, highly cited uh, scientists in the world, Martin Pumera, for instance. Uh, most of these people work with classical nanotechnology, um, like surface science, uh, you know, quantum dots and quantum wells and, uh, and, uh, and so on. A lot of them, and it was already mentioned, Brno is very strong in instrumentation. We even have a national institute for instrumentation uh, in Brno. Uh, and um, so a lot of them are doing scientific instrumentation, a lot of these groups. Uh, I will skip that because that's uh, unfortunately limited time. Uh, advanced materials uh, are maybe more classical you want uh, you know from ceramics to uh, high performance uh, you know, surface uh, hard coating uh, for jet engines and so on uh, we also have groups in, uh, in prosthetics uh, and so on you know, replacing skin and and and, and etc etc so uh, maybe more classical polymers ceramics um, and uh, plasma technology and so on uh, this one uh, is uh, kind of coordinated by Professor Václavek, who will be talking in a minute, and uh, it's a recently established group, so there's only two, two members at the moment. Um, uh, I actually put this slide uh, only uh, for one reason, to show you that it takes some time uh, to generate uh, output. Uh, when you established 2011, it uh, took us about eight years uh, to kind of like generate uh, 
generate uh, roughly about 300 scientific papers a year. Uh, obviously, 2014 is going to grow a little bit, but we are also growing in annual citations, so that's uh, uh, quite a, one, of our, one of our product. Uh, this actually uh, generated, uh, well, not just this, but uh, also Masaryk University, um, quite a lot of projects. So we run about also about 150 ongoing projects just in the VUT. Uh, and uh, probably about 70-80% of our, of our budget is, uh, is project-based, is uh, competitive-based. Uh, competitive uh, so uh, it's, um, it's this. Um, very, I mean, um, since uh, probably a few years back, uh, it came to us as well um, that um, uh, universities should generate also startup companies, and we are very happy that uh, as a young organization, we have about eight of them. Uh, these are... You know, about six of them are from VUT, two of them are from Masaryk University, and majority of them are in instrumentation. Um, I wouldn't go through them individually, but, uh, uh, but uh, they are uh, kind of very, uh, very much uh, focused on um, scientific instruments. Some of them are in artificial intelligence, uh, some of them are in kind of defense industry, but uh, generally speaking, the rest are uh, uh, doing um, one way or another uh, scientific instrumentation. As already mentioned, um, one of the kind of key um, infrastructure we have at SATEC, uh, which is open to you also uh, for potential use, uh, is uh, SATEC nano research infrastructure, about uh, 2,000 square meters of uh, clean rooms, out of which is about 750, 800 meters uh, clean room 100. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember what is uh, the ISO, but uh, uh, but it's the room which uh, basically allows us to do um, the whole chain from wafer to chip, uh, if you want. But we don't do only chips. We do a lot of kind of like classical, classical nanotechnology. So we have the whole uh, lithography uh, processes uh, all the way up to packaging, uh, which is really kind of industrial packaging, but uh, packaging nevertheless. Um, that. Uh, it includes uh, structures. Uh, currently, we can do structures to about uh, maybe 30, 40 nanometers. Uh, uh, recently, we got through uh, the funding, which would, be allow, which would allow us to go down to about maybe 5 to 10 nanometers, uh, but that will be probably from next year. Uh, that uh, is, I already mentioned, open access. Uh, uh, the only cost uh, for researchers, and I think it's quite important to mention, is uh, roughly about 2,000 euros a year as a, as a fee for um, health and safety and training uh, and uh, kind of like small contribution to the cost, uh, running cost of that, inst of that, in um, of that uh, lab. Uh, and the rest uh, of that is pretty much free. So if you want to use it, um, as, um, as kind of making your structures or making your nano nanotechnology structures, uh, uh, you can send students, and this is one of the potential offer we have uh, for you uh, to, to join us. The second one is uh, quite uh, important, and this is, I think, my last slide. Um, um, I, we kind of uh, stand on the kind of researchers, obviously, the, the key key people. Uh, many of them are holders of you know, prestigious grants like ERC. In SATEC, I believe we have about eight currently people, uh, ERCs, in VUT about three. And uh, uh, yes, so the, the second one is the infrastructure, and the third one is uh, the PhD school. We have, uh, we have the one of the first, not one of the first, but the very first PhD school in the country. We run it from pretty much beginning of uh, SATEC um, uh, existence uh, from probably 2000, 2012. Currently about 145 students uh, from 25 countries. Uh, 55 uh, are a little bit misleading because uh, a lot of students, uh, the VUT comes from Slovakia. We have about 4,000 Slovakian students in VUT and about 20% of Slovakian students in SATEC, uh, but uh, the remaining 35, one third basically is coming from uh, other 25 countries uh, <coughs> in uh, Europe and, and the other, other uh, uh, countries. Um, uh, and that's the second offer. Uh, we, uh, obviously, nobody wants to hear about brain drain, uh, but uh, we, o we offer, uh, we are kind of like currently in very much uh, very keen on running uh, Cotutel, uh, which is kind of like du dual PhD, uh, where we offer um, uh, supervising and a diploma from both universities. We have currently Cotutel with uh, some Italian universities, French universities, be very happy to establish one with, uh, with uh, 
Croatia, uh, if, if there is an interest, uh, there's a definitely potential how to get involved and uh, develop the long-term partnership and friendship. And I think that's my last slide. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to answer questions later. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pavel Václovek and uh, I am coordinator of uh, Industrial Cybernetics Research Area at SATEC. Uh, I am also a research group leader uh, of group uh, Cybernetics and Robotics. And I'm also affiliated as a full professor with uh, Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Communications. Uh, I would like uh, briefly touch two areas where I see, um, let's say, a very straightforward uh, opportunity for uh, cooperation without any barriers. So something where we can quite easily start. The first one is uh, research uh, uh, in uh, areas of uh, industrial, industrial cybernetics. So uh, in this area we have team uh, dealing with uh, this kind of topics, so control automation systems, artificial intelligence applications, robotics, uh, mobile robots, field robotics, uh, also industrial sensors, measurement systems, uh, industrial communications, and uh, a lot of other uh, topics which are behind like instrumentation, PLC, industrial control systems, and so on. With uh, mostly applications uh, in three main areas, automotive, uh, then so-called industry 4.0, and uh, partially also uh, uh, activities in healthcare domain. Uh, I would like just to mention that uh, we are running uh, most of these activities in uh, quite intensive international cooperation. So just uh, in my team in this area, we have currently uh, running like 11 large uh, Horizon 2020, Horizon Europe and Digital Europe uh, projects. Uh, and uh, uh, approximately, if I'm right, 77% of funding of our team is coming from this uh, international project. So we are really very open for, for cooperation. And uh, uh, what we are here namely doing, uh, we are trying to connect a little bit these two domains of uh, Industry 4.0 and uh, uh, automotive systems. And we are trying to search for solution for highly reliable systems like fail operational powertrains, fail operational actuators for highly automated factories. So trying to do uh, research of topics in this chain as shown here uh, at the bottom of the slide. So dealing with fail-aware systems, fail-safe systems, weakness-aware, fail-operational, maybe in future self-healing uh, systems. And uh, uh, in particular, we are here doing uh, a lot of research in so-called fail-operational drives. Uh, so topics like control of uh, multi-phase uh, drives, uh, diagnostics, fault prediction using AI methods, uh, fault mitigation to be able to achieve uh, operation of the drives in, uh, um, let's say, safety critical applications in industry, vehicles, airspace, uh, maybe also for something for railways. So uh, uh, here I think that, uh, um, as we know, there are also uh, companies and institutes uh, dealing with this type of technologies, power electronics, uh, machines and so on. Um, namely, what I have in mind is Rimac, uh, which uh, I think is a top class uh, um, company dealing with technologies in uh, electrical powertrains for uh, electromobility. Uh, today we cooperate here mostly with uh, German uh, partners like uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, uh, we have cooperation with uh, ZF Friedrichshafen, Bosch, Continental, and uh, others also partners from Austria, like AVL. Uh, still, uh, we are somehow missing partners from Croatia in our projects and uh, other activities. So uh, this is uh, one of my offers uh, to start something new in this uh, maybe green vehicles, electromobility, powertrains, and so on as a, as a research topic. Uh, the second uh, thing, okay, is uh, not so much uh, oriented to research, uh, but possibility to use our infrastructure. Um, we have uh, quite uh, interesting infrastructure, kind of 
uh, experimentation on a smart factory for testing uh, AI applications in uh, real industrial environments. It was built within Horizon 2020 teaming uh, project. Now it's, uh, this infrastructure is fully operational. And uh, here we are providing not only to researchers, but also to companies a uh, quite uh, complex set of uh, equipment. Uh, it is uh, uh, some kind of production machines, 3D printing, laser cutting, uh, machining. Uh, we have also uh, a lot of equipment related to robotics, uh, mobile robots, uh, walking robots, uh, also uh, uh, some underlying technologies, uh, private 5G standalone network, HPC resources. We just uh, installed quite interesting cluster from uh, NVIDIA DGX, uh, so one of the few in Europe is uh, running uh, in our testbed. And uh, we are providing this not only to researchers, but also to companies. Uh, I'm pretty sure that in, here in Croatia you are also operating European digital innovation hubs. So this is part of one of the European digital innovation hubs. Uh, so we can provide uh, uh, within this hub uh, services uh, supported from this grant uh, to companies. Uh, but these digital you know, European innovation hubs are usually aimed just uh, regionally. Uh, so it's not so much useful for international cooperation, but we have something additional to this. I don't know if you know the scheme. The European Commission established uh, four so-called so uh, AI uh, testing and experimentation facilities. Uh, one is uh, for healthcare, one is for agriculture and food, one is for uh, smart cities, and one is for manufacturing. And uh, this is a network of uh, reference uh, testing sites to provide uh, testing environments for uh, AI applications uh, in industry. You can see these uh, seven nodes and uh, one satellite in Greece. Uh, so we have uh, this check node. Uh, so our testbed is one of the reference uh, testing sites of this network. And what is good is that uh, this network covers whole Europe. So uh, even in Croatia, there is no note for uh, AI manufacturing. Croatian companies can use uh, services of this network. So uh, uh, if, namely, you are as a me wanting to test your AI technology uh, for manufacturing industry, you can come to us and uh, do the testing in uh, uh, our uh, smart factory. Also, we can provide uh, computing resources. So, for example, for some machine learning or AI models uh, training uh, in general, we can provide uh, even Croatian SMEs computational resources uh, with uh, funding covered by this uh, Digital Europe uh, uh, project. Yeah, so there are definitely much more uh, additional possibilities, but uh, for this uh, time, uh, it's all. Uh, we have no more time to discuss this. And uh, if you are interested, uh, we can discuss other pot possibilities later. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Mr. Professor, thank you very much. So now we would like you know to do uh, like the 10 minutes uh, coffee break, and we will return you know back to the uh, to this hall at 11, 11 15. I have a question. But first, I have to apologize uh, for being absent for a minute uh, because I did have uh, some other obligations uh, being formed ambassador of Czechia to India. I just wanted to, to pay tribute to Mahatma uh, Gandhi. talk about uh, those uh, AI testing facilities and you invited uh, Croatian partners uh, to come and uh, test uh, their solutions uh, to be used in manufacturing uh, sectors. Uh, well, uh, 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 do they have to pay for it? Do they have to pay for it? Uh, and if the answer is yes, how much uh, do they have to pay for it? And uh, what more we can eventually do to bring this information uh, closer to those who might be eventually interested. 
because this is truly something yeah. special. Okay, so uh, I will start with, let's say, the bad thing. Uh, for large companies, it uh, would be necessary to pay. Uh, so we, uh, well, it's not possible to say how much because it's necessary to calculate it for every individual experiment based on what the equipment is used and so on. So large companies must pay. For SMEs, as I said, it's fully covered from the project and it works uh, in the way uh, that uh, if uh, some SME comes uh, uh, to use uh, this uh, uh, facility, we will again uh, calculate full commercial price, but then half of the cost uh, is covered by a digital Europe program, so from Brussels, from money from Brussels, and second part is covered by uh, Czech uh, government uh, within a national, uh, how it's called, uh, uh, oh, and uh, Narodní plan obnovy. Yeah, National Recovery Plan. <laughs> so uh, uh, this second half will be covered by Czech uh, sources, and it fact, it will be registered as a de minimis support for the company, but in Czech Republic. It's also quite interesting thing, which is not so much known for SMEs that this limit of uh, 300,000 euros per three years is per member country. So if a Croatian uh, SME uses these services in Czech Republic, they are using this limit, it's counted against the limit in Czech Republic. But in Croatia, the SME can use another 300,000 euros uh, against the Croatian limit. Yeah? So I think that especially from partners from abroad, it is uh, very interesting because usually SMEs are a little bit uh, afraid to use these limits uh, completely because also um, other things uh, on national level are computed uh, against this, uh, calculated against this limit. But in this case, uh, it's not influencing your limit in Croatia. So uh, if you will come, you, will, you are SME and are you, come, you are coming with eligible topics, so AI in, in manufacturing, uh, at the end you will in fact pay nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So, any other uh, questions or uh, comments before we go to the coffee break? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, there is also the restrooms, so toilets, and enjoy the coffee break. And please, 11 15, we'll, we'll meet back here, okay? And be here because we're going to call all of you.
Test, test, test.
Jeden, dva, tři. Začínáme. Strč prst, skrk, skrk. Vrátce Petře, to je takový jednoduchý. No. Ale to strč prst skrz krk, to je, to je složitý, ale to je složitý. Tak. Interesting discussion is going on. <laughs> See, this is the very interesting discussion, right? Yeah, which is good, but it will be also interesting now. <laughs> interesting presentation. I have a privilege, you know, to, to manage it here, yes. Super. Perfect. So uh, after the uh, coffee and tea uh, short break, which was very interesting, I, I think, because, you know, proves that there is a discussion that there is an interest. So uh, now I would like, you know, to give the, give the, give the floor, you know, to Mr. Banash of, uh, of, uh, of Katrin. She's from uh, the city of Olomouc. He will present, you know, the activities of this uh, very interesting institution. Okay, so do, do be done, hopefully saying correctly. So uh, uh, your excellency, Mr. Ambassador, uh, Mr. Dean, Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, let me uh, briefly introduce our uh, institute called Catherine. And uh, this beautiful name is, of course, abbreviation of the rather boring uh, name, Czech Advanced Technology and Research Institute. Uh, however, we use it also to, to show what we are doing. So C for chemistry, A for agriculture, translation medicine, renewable energy, innovation materials, and nanotechnologies. That, that's essentially what, what we are doing. And uh, in the next few minutes, I would like to uh, show you who we are, what we are doing in a little bit more details. So we come from a very beautiful city, Olomouc, which is in the middle of Moravia. If you have not been there, uh, I uh, highly recommend to, to, to visit our uh, city. And this city hosts uh, the second oldest university of Czech Republic, Palacki University, so second oldest after Charles University, which uh, uh, settled in Prague. And uh, quite recently, in 2021, so of course not comparable to, to the age of the, our university, we established our uh, research institute, Katrin, and it was uh, established by integration of three research centers. Uh, uh, one uh, RCPTM that is focused on material research and nanotechnologies. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, CRH, uh, which is agriculture research and, and plant research. And uh, last but not least, Institute of Molecular and Translation Medicine, which focuses on, uh, on biomedicine and, and medical research. Uh, uh, I said that we have been established in 2021, but the history of the centers comes from 2010. So roughly we have been uh, established in the same time as SATEC, for instance. Uh, if we look at uh, our instituted numbers, we have uh, more than 200 employees, one uh, third of them from abroad, from uh, different countries, mostly, uh, mostly uh, Europe, but also from Asia, South uh, Africa. Unfortunately, Croatia is still missing, so that's, uh, that's the space for, for the improvement. Uh, there's a special note for, for Mrs. Kalinova. We are very proud that uh, uh, a significant part of our, uh, our employees are, are using a women power, so, uh, and, and hopefully this number will improve in future. Uh, well, uh, I would like to follow the, the idea of, uh, of Mr. Ambassador that, uh, of course, the, uh, the research and development and innovation makes our lives better, uh, improves the, the well-being, but what's uh, very fruitful for research is the collaboration. And 
well, uh, our institute collaborates with, with many partners from, from academia and industry. We have uh, uh, four, I would say, strategical or, or main partnerships with colleagues from, from Germany, from Leibniz Institute, uh, where we collaborate on, on catalysis, from uh, colleagues from, uh, from Barcelona, ICN2, on, on sensors, uh, colleagues from Barilan University in Tel Aviv, so we are still uh, now on these days thinking of what, what happened there, uh, where we collaborate on, on um, uh, materials uh, development for uh, supercups and batteries, and quite recently in the field of, uh, of uh, application of nanomaterials in biomedicine with colleagues uh, from Taiwanese National Health Research Institutes. But uh, nevertheless, beside this, uh, let's say, main collaborations, uh, we collaborate a little bit, lot of countries, and again, if I'm looking there very carefully, still there is uh, a bit of, of, of space for improvement in the collaboration with Croatia. Uh, well, so, uh, as the collaboration is the, is the main engine of the, of, the, of the research and development. Of course, there are uh, very nice tools to promote the collaboration, which are the, uh, the, the joint research grants, and especially uh, those of the, of the uh, uh, Horizon Europe uh, program. So these are just the, the glimpse of the, the collaboration uh, where we are uh, involved with the partners from, from Europe. Uh, and we are very proud that uh, well, if we count the, the European funding per FT, we are one of the top, uh, top Czech institutions. Uh, and and also, of course, this is the, the way how we can uh, start the collaboration uh, together. Um, so now look at what we are doing, uh, so, so where to collaborate. And as I have mentioned, the three of uh, our divisions, uh, they match the, the different, uh, let's say, targets of the, the societal challenges where we uh, are uh, targeting our research. So with the material research, it's, uh, um, is, the, is the research that is targeting the, the challenges of climate change and energy crisis. So I will uh, well, probably focus mostly on, on this, this field. Uh, uh, in, in medicine, we are, uh, we are targeting the, uh, the cancer and inflammatory diseases. And in agriculture, uh, as, as I mentioned, we are focusing on plant research, so, so uh, uh, let's say doing the, uh, let's say, transfer, genetic transformation of plants to make them uh, more resistant to, uh, to stress factors like drought and, uh, and, and the others. So I will spend just two slides with the, uh, with the, uh, the bio part. Uh, and then, then I will move to uh, what is more interesting for us, uh, the material research uh, and nanotechnologies. So in, uh, in agricultural research, uh, we are uh, focusing our research to, to genetic transformation of plants and, uh, and we have quite unique um, experience and facility for phenotyping, so uh, with uh, automated uh, monitoring uh, of the plant growth. There, of course, a lot of sensing uh, comes into the uh, uh, into the game. Uh, here are just two examples of the projects where we collaborate with uh, uh, several institutions across the Europe on uh, preparing uh, in part of this program, preparing on the uh, incoming uh, disease, potato disease uh, that is now destroying the the production of potatoes in South America, and for sure will come to Europe in next year, so, so preparing the how to, let's say, uh, sense uh, the disease, uh, easily, uh, easily diagnose it and, and, and treat it. Uh, the other one, sorry, uh, the other one is focused on, on the barley uh, system, how to make the barley uh, more resistant to stress, but also, also uh, to make the barley as a, as a plant for, for biofarming where we get produced, uh, for instance, uh, human peptides for some uh, medical purpose uh, in, in the field, in, in the seeds of, of barley. Uh, besides the science, we are very active also in, in the legislation process. So maybe you have heard about uh, CRISPR and these new genome technologies. So we were part uh, of, the, of the legislation process on the level of EU. Uh, thanks also to one of our colleague, uh, Professor Frebold, who is uh, Vice President of European Federation of Biotechnology. So we are doing our best to promote uh, the, let's say, uh, the information about these new technologies 
that are uh, currently, unfortunately, very uh, strictly um, regulated uh, in the EU. So, but back to the, uh, the material research. Uh, uh, well, the material research and nanotechnologies are a flagship of our institute. And, uh, and uh, in past years, we focus on uh, synthesis, characterization, and application of different kind of materials, mostly low dimensional materials, but also we are entering to the application of catalysis, uh, the bio biomedical application, and, and uh, also the field of energy storage and harvesting. Uh, well, this is, uh, these are uh, some examples of our technologies um, uh, that we, uh, let's say, transfer to, uh, to the real applications. So going from left, oh, sorry, right to left. Uh, uh, so uh, I would like to mention the, uh, the technologies for uh, water treatment. So based on zero volume uh, iron, the unique of this technology is that they, they can be, these nano, zero volume nanoparticles can be pumped into, uh, into the groundwater, uh, clean uh, the groundwater and can stay here because they are very uh, environment friendly. Essentially they, uh, they uh, transform into iron oxide so they can very efficiently uh, uh, clean uh, the groundwaters. Uh, another uh, technology in the middle, is the, the isolation of lactoferrin peptide from the milk media or, or, uh, or either milk itself or, or some, some, some derivatives of milk. And this is the, the protein which is damaged by the pasteurization process and can be, can be uh, uh, separated before any, any other uh, say, uh, steps in the, in the milk production and can be used uh, in, in the pills uh, as a supplement uh, for food. Uh, we are using our uh, magnetic nanoparticles to, uh, to, uh, to let's say, separate uh, these peptides. And I think this was licensed to, uh, to one of the Polish, uh, the, the biggest producer of milk in, in Poland. And now it's in, uh, in the say, uh, uh, routine fabrication. And the last but not least is the, the example where, we, uh, where our materials are uh, now developed for uh, the super cups. And I will, I will probably speak about this uh, a bit uh, more on later slides. But now we are, this year we are establishing a spin-off company uh, of production of materials for, for super cups. Um, well, but uh, going back to the, uh, in the story, quite uh, recently, a few years ago, uh, we uh, opened uh, a completely new uh, research uh, field uh, in the nanotechnologies. And it was uh, Professor Otiepka, who is sitting there in the audience, who uh, started uh, or opened the graphene chemistry. So probably you have heard about graphene and, and the Nobel Prize uh, several or many years ago. But, that, uh, but we, are, uh, we opened uh, completely the, the chemistry on top of the graphene, where we can use it for several purposes. And uh, these materials are useful in different applications. So I've already mentioned the, uh, the materials for super cups and batteries, but also, also I will uh, show the example of the, the application in, in sensing, but also catalysis, uh, et, et cetera. Uh, so this is one of the, let's say, most advanced technologies we are uh, using and developing. So again, based on the, the graphene or uh, 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 chemically modified graphene nanomaterials, we, which we can use as an as a ink, and print the sensors uh, of uh, whatever purpose. So uh, quite recently, we, for instance, developed the sensor for antibiotics in water or, or other, other media that can be easily plugged into, the, into your cell phone and you can, uh, you can essentially monitor uh, your target molecule in the field very, very easily and by a very, very low price. Uh, and uh, why this? I would like also to, to, to mention uh, a, a completely new research direction we opened quite recently. And because, uh, you know, the nanotechnology is with us for 30 or 40 years. So it was, uh, there was a lot of done in this field. But now we are moving to a uh, completely new field, which is single atom engineering. So once uh, the, uh, the let's say material research were uh, scaled down to below 100 nanometers. The, the material completely changed the behavior. Below 10 nanometers, it was uh, again. But if you use single atoms uh, trapped in the in the very precisely defined defects 
of the nanomaterials. Remember, nanomaterials are now the scaffold, but the chemical action are doing these single atoms. We can, uh, we can design uh, a completely new branch of the materials and, and uh, uh, together with colleagues with, uh, from, from Statec and Charles University, we are now uh, developing this uh, single atom engineering for uh, sensing application, uh, energy uh, storage and, and catalysis. So finally, uh, because we should uh, think about what is the purpose of this meeting, this very nice meeting, uh, and, and the, as, uh, from my point of view, it's the, the, the promoting of the collaboration, mutual collaboration, which is the, uh, uh, the, the blood of the, of, the, of the research and development. And uh, uh, I would like to also thank, uh, thanks to, uh, to Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, and, uh, and you, uh, Mr. Ambassador, for very kind invitation. And uh, I hope that we will uh, find the topics and uh, because, of course, it's, uh, the important question is to think what could be the next step. And uh, here I would like to show the example because if we, would, uh, if we are able now to define the particular field where we can collaborate, because uh, you are here director as deans and, uh, and for sure we, we can identify the particular field, I believe the, 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 the next step uh, could be to organize some, uh, some conference, uh, the, the same situation was in 2018 with the U.S. and uh, embassy uh, uh, where we organized a Czech U.S. Uh, conference on uh, advanced technologies and chemical chemical research. It was very uh, very fruitful. Where essentially uh, we uh, put uh, researchers together, and that's that, that's the very good uh, following step. So I hope that we will today be able to identify the the fields of interest. And, and, and I'm suggesting that this might be the next step. Okay, so thanks for your attention. That's all from my side, and I would be happy, more than happy to answer any question. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So are there any, any questions to this? Uh, we can always you know, move it uh, at the end and later. So uh, now I would like to uh, one question from the ambassador, very important question. I don't want to be the only one to ask questions, but I think that colleague of ours, program minister, in a, was it a direct intervention or you exactly mentioned the term incoming mission, and now you talked about the possibility of organizing a conference in the beautiful city of Olomouc. Mr. Dean, I think that we can also consider uh, the possibility to taking it forward also to the incoming mission, to bring together those uh, who attend today's seminar, eventually others who may eventually be also interested, we do have uh, our wisdom and money with us from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We can put all these elements together and to think about organizing the same kind of uh, event uh, based on the compact uh, and uh, uh, all uh, fruitful uh, discussions we are having. Just to add uh, to what you just mentioned, I took careful note in your second or third slide did have a nice, uh, I would not call it map, but uh, still description of uh, countries with which uh, you have uh, common publications. Uh, if my understanding is correct, yeah. I could not find Croatia. <laughs> or uh, I wrote in my assumption, or is no. there something uh, that missed uh, my careful attention? No, unfortunately you're, you're uh, right exactly. There was no Croatia, there was Slovenia, there was uh, Greece, uh, but I think it was not in the format. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe there was some, some countries from also. I, I, I cannot rule out that we had a single team interested uh, in, from, from Croatia, but uh, unfortunately not so much, uh, and there is a real potential to, to do the same. And if you allow me, Pepo, I will still add that it is not uh, just a beautiful city, but uh, it is also a city uh, having one of the best Philharmonic orchestras in Czechia, Morelia Philharmonic Orchestra, and mentioning it because uh, uh, we were privileged of having them in Croatia.
Russia, they gave two concerts, one in uh, Varaždin and the other one, Mr. Dean, in the city of Dubrovnik. <laughs> okay, and that uh, we did have almost one again uh, this year in town, uh, not just in uh, Zagreb, but in other two cities uh, when uh, we celebrated the day of uh, Czech Armed Forces. Uh, and uh, to uh, celebrate in a glamorous uh, manner, uh, we invited the military band of the Czech army, which is again based in the city of Olomouc. That's true, true, that's true. Perfect, thank you. Uh, well, actually, uh, yeah, it was mentioned there is no Croatia, but uh, again, why we are doing this event? Just to start this mutual advantage about cooper collaboration. And as we can uh, see there is the potential so that's why again we are we are doing doing this so uh, mm, uh, if uh, now i would like you know to that we can continue i would like to invite uh, lenka schwitzerva from technology center prague thank you very much So, Madam Švejcarová, please. Thank you. Dobr dan. I'm Lenka Švejcarová. I've been uh, for six years working in Technology Center Prague. And um, uh, we are not uh, an academic institution, not a research institution, but we are a key national body active for 30 years in um, international research and innovation field, and specifically in advisory. Um, uh, the Technology Center Prague, um, I will shortly introduce you what we do um, and what is the mission of, of myself here today. And then, uh, yeah, uh, later on we will see if there, there is some good match uh, for us to collaborate. Okay, um, we actually have three departments. Uh, one of them is uh, called uh, Strategic Studies, and this department this department's mission is, let's say, uh, to provide um, strategic analysis and foresight, foresight studies uh, for the public administration authorities in the Czech Republic, mainly ministries, but also regional authorities or cities and so on. This department um, uh, has about 20 employees, the same as the other two departments. So we are in total about 70 people and um, actually uh, the mission of these colleagues is to support with good quality of background information of analytical types the national public authorities in their uh, decision making in the field of research and innovation uh, strategic ag agendas. Um, I mentioned foresight activities but they also do the emerging technologies assessment, they do do the Scienti scientific um, um, provi provision of uh, information on uh, scientific uh, results and outputs, and um, yeah, and that's basically it. Then the second department, they have different focus. They focus on uh, support for um, small and medium enterprises (SMEs). And actually, the main core of their business is to do the business acceleration towards the international markets and the commercial commercialization. Um, they focus on technology transfer. They provide uh, complex consultancy in intellectual property protection. And they also um, are part of the European uh, Enterprise Network, the same as Croatia is. Uh, which actually enables them to match make different partners um, together and help to get um, their products or uh, services towards the international uh, environment. Um, yeah, well, um, 
this department uh, focused on uh, business acceleration. Uh, they also closely co collaborate with the European Space Agency and they actually hold a status of, uh, of, uh, of an official body for, um, uh, for the, um, they are ESA brokers indeed. So they connect the space industries with non-space industries, but not only in the Czech Republic, but uh, Europe-wide. Right, and then I am getting to the National Information Center for European Research, um, which is my department actually, but where I'm a national contact point, one of 15 workers, let's say trained NCPs, the same ones as uh, Croatia has, because um, um, each European country has a national center for European research. So uh, I'm in charge of uh, digital areas and also industrial and also security uh, research, in including uh, cybersecurity research. What we do in our department, um, um, we, we are trained uh, in provision of info days, specific workshops for applicants in uh, European framework programs, uh, mainly Horizon Europe, but also we provide consultancy uh, in wider spheres, also in um, not, not only Horizon Europe, but also other European funding programs. And we help um, any sort of uh, applicant. It can be um, uh, industrial applicant, SMEs, NGOs, even uh, individuals coming to us with innovative uh, intentions. So we uh, kind of guide them uh, towards the application. We help them with the uh, proposal application process writing. And we also uh, uh, provide complex advisory in uh, financial and legal issues when the projects are already funded, uh, when they are implemented. Okay. This is the Horizon Europe uh, uh, picture and the uh, synergic programs uh, which I actually and teams of NCPs which are monitored and kind of uh, updated uh, also due to the fact that um, we as national contact points are members of uh, European Commission's work program committees for Horizon Europe and thanks to this fact that we actively involve the meetings and we collect feedback there and we are part of the preparation process of the future calls of these programs, we can um, very well inform our communities in the Czech Republic and uh, they can get ready for um, application for grants and funding in these and other funding programs. Yeah. Um, I have um, selected uh, only a few programs which are relevant for microelectronics and semiconductors and other digital technologies like quantum and so on and so forth. So later on, if you are interested in, um, in the background and conditions of these uh, funding programs, you can come to me whenever. Or come to your uh, national NCPs because we collaborate together as well. Uh, here, this is a, a short dive into the structure of Horizon Europe programs. You see the societal challenges are quite complex. Um, in, the pink, um, in the pink part, you see the digital areas and also energy, mobility, and so on and so forth. And uh, the, the program is really large. It has the budget for seven years, nearly 100 billion euros. You see down in the right bottom corner. Um, I checked uh, the statistics of uh, successful participation of Croatian institutes and Czech institutes, institutes and they are quite a few, uh, so this is a positive message, I would say. Um, I got a list of about 40 uh, funded projects. You see the acronyms in the blue, um, but uh, here I listed only those relevant for uh, today's content uh, of today's conference, so you see several Croatian institutions which already collaborate in consortia, consortia projects uh, with Czech, also with Czech participants. So these are the combinations. Yeah. So that's the good message. Um, there were also many other 
fields or sectors uh, where the collaboration is uh, well set up already. Uh, mainly it's the health sector, also um, projects from bioeconomy are funded with Czech and Croatian collaboration and uh, also uh, you know the, the clim climate area like food industry, fresh water management, clean oceans, agri-food and so on and also forestry project there is one uh, being funded since 2021. So, um, you Croatian institutes can come um, later to me uh, in, an, in individual consultations and I can give you the list of such collaborations so that you can get some inspiration and an overview where to start. All right, this is my uh, last slide indeed. Um, at the European level, because we are networks of national contact points and we together with the European Commission, we also organize uh, networking events called brokerage events. Um, and there are quite, quite many uh, indeed. Uh, so currently, um, if you go to the first link I have here, Horizont Europa CZ, there is the list of five currently open events. There are one or two days conferences. One is in Riga, another is in Brussels, another is in Barcelona. And they are focused um, by specific sectors. So um, Riga has the 5G technologies and also quantum and other key, uh, key emerging technologies in the digital field. Um, then there is the Smart Cities Conference in Barcelona and so on and so forth. Um, I am mentioning this because uh, especially for SMEs or uh, subjects which um, um, cost of travel to such events can be you know, uh, not, not so easy to handle. So um, national bodies like Technology Center and also the Croatian um, uh, Agence for Mobility, I think. We provide specific grants uh, of 1,000 euro to cover your travel cost, hotel and uh, and uh, and uh, tr um, flight ticket. Yeah, so um, apply. Check participants traveled um, uh, in last one year, and they were about 60 uh, 60 people already in these uh, missions, so that they could know how to, you know, um, they would learn how to. Um, <laughs> how to be effective and to learn the European uh, funding landscape and also matchmaking because at these events you always get uh, an opportunity to present yourself. There's always a section in the agenda for the short pitch presentation. So that's the way how you can make visible yourself. Okay, and these uh, grants are called travel grants. You can get some information there. Um, yeah, so that's my role here. We are actually an intermediate intermediator, um, ready for Czech and Croatian interested parties. And thank you for your attention. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So, any comments to this uh, presentation? As I said, we can then, of course, at the at the end, we can have this. You would dislike me <laughs> if I don't ask uh, a question. I'm ready. Non-discrimination is one of the most important uh, uh, rule, and I have been serving for more than uh, six years as ambassador of Czech Happy Birthday Association. Now I'm going to honor that non-discrimination principle. What does it work in practice? Okay. To contact you, we will enter into uh, in fact uh, the negotiation of counterpart and then come back uh, to me with uh, uh, the answer. So how does it work in practice? Uh, exactly. Yes. Well, uh, if such a collaboration request comes to myself, I first have a short usually interview tele telephone call with that person interested I find out what what is the field of his or her expertise and then um, my personally I search for the funding opportunities just generally 
uh, together with my colleague from the other department for the, the, the SME support. And we um, usually, we search in the national funding opportunities first. But if uh, such a sub subject, such a company um, is already experienced and has a solution or tool close to the market and wants to expand to international, then that's the typical case for us and for, for me and for the other department because they are ready uh, to attend the international research programs. So um, we found find the specific opportunity, uh, come back to them, discuss it, and then uh, we just collect inf information what will be uh, their requirements on the other uh, counterpart partner from Croatia and how would we find the Croatian partner yes mm -hmm. that's um, <laughs> that's the question um, one good positive thing is that the uh, Enterprise Europe network which is really large and they have a database of s s nearly 100,000 contacts of different uh, institutions uh, worldwide. So this is the place where, for example, my colleague would go. But then um, they already, thanks to the 30 years of experience, they have some set up collaborations. So they would uh, individually contact their contact people uh, and discuss uh, which partners should, uh, should be recommended and should be contacted. Yeah. So uh, they are not uh, directly specified procedures, no, but um, yeah, we do our best in a friendly way and yeah, to do the effective matchmaking. Uh, yeah. And the service is free of charge? The service is free of charge, yes. We help to everybody, newcomers, experienced partners. Uh, for example, uh, universities with large project departments, they don't often need much support because the pre award um, skills are already there, uh, the same as the post award, you know, with the implementation of the projects. So uh, we often deal with newcomers, but, uh, you know, calls are new everywhere, every, every year, and there are thousands of funding calls for proposals in the European framework programs. So this is always, you know, a lot of work to do, how to best, you know, pick the right tool, yeah, and help with the pro proposal application. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, so, uh, back to what the ambassador mentioned, uh, you know, before, of course, uh, uh, in the future, we would like definitely, you know, to follow up with this interesting conference, with this seminar, and it was mentioned, you know, it's possible, you know, to also have this, we call it, you know, project of, uh, for the support of the economic diplomacy, which we can also follow up, for example, next year, if there is interest, you know, from Croatian side, we can, you know, um, have this conference for the Czech Republic in the cities of, uh, you know, Prague, Brno, Olomouc. So if there is an interest, we can definitely do that. And as I said, it will be like a follow-up. It's called the incoming mission, which we will cover all the everything, you know, including the, you know, accommodation and uh, interesting uh, program and meetings. This is just for the information. So now I would like, you know, to invite uh, Želka Kočelič. She's from uh, Eli Laser near Prague. She will present an interesting presentation, but uh, you can also present in Croatian, right? <laughs> yes, like Hoche, da? Jelka. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Please. Hello everyone, Dobar dan svima. Uh, to use the terminology introduced by Dean Bilas, I have a bit of a advantage of a home terrain uh, with the previous uh, experience uh, of uh, 
almost a decade in a Croatian research uh, community, primarily in the Ministry of Science. But today I'm here representing uh, Eli Eric, uh, which was introduced uh, uh, by, the, by Olga previously as the world's biggest um, uh, infrastructure um, gathering, um, actually the high intensity uh, lasers uh, in the world. So this sounds, whenever somebody says biggest, largest, uh, best in the world, uh, um, frequently it's an exaggeration, but I'll try to show uh, that we do actually offer uh, to users primarily from the research uh, sector, uh, really an impressive uh, uh, um, uh, resources in terms of science and technology. So uh, just to start with, uh, there was a bit of discussion uh, in the beginning, uh, context about creation and check uh, uh, um, um, strengths, which areas uh, are um, most, um, are kind of mo the, the focal points of economies and research in both countries. Uh, I don't know if you were aware of this, but there is one area or technology where Europe actually is leading compared to US and Asia. And this is exactly uh, lasers, laser production and installation, especially uh, high power lasers. So on this slide, you'll, you'll see this uh, accumulation uh, which is focused currently in Europe. And one of our LE's uh, priorities is, of course, to, to ensure that the commission and that the funding also goes to this area in the future to secure this leading position of Europe and benefit all our members. And Probably yes, we usually don't show it. <laughs> we are usually, when we do the comparison to, to uh, other laser facilities in Europe, we usually uh, focus on facilities in, in France, UK, uh, Germany, etc. But the, the biggest uh, bubbles here uh, should be uh, Eli's uh, laser. So, and I'll show this on examples. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, so um, we also pride ourselves, this is why we, we, we are happy to say uh, best, that we are now connected to not one uh, Nobel Prize, which uh, led to establishment of ELI. This was based on a Nobel Prize uh, from 2018, from the development of Chirpast amplification, simply a technology that, that enabled development of uh, high intensity lasers and hence ALI's uh, resources. And uh, the second one from last year uh, in the area of physics, of course, uh, is also related to auto second uh, uh, light uh, pulses, which is more related to our facility in Hungary. So just to uh, give you an idea, I already mentioned uh, uh, different facilities. So what is ELI actually? Um, we are re three facilities, uh, one in uh, Hungary, in Seged, uh, one in uh, Doni Brezhani, very close to Prague, in Czech Republic, and the third one, uh, Eli and P, in uh, Magurele, in uh, Romania. Uh, however, only two of these facilities, meaning the one in Czech Republic and the one in Hungary, uh, are currently in... Um, Eli or Eli Eric, which basically Eric stands for consortium. This is maybe not important for, for researchers, but really just means that uh, uh, it gives us an opportunity to have uh, um, unified or standardized uh, services for our users across facilities. Um, members of the way we are funded, there was a bit of a question in the discussion before uh, uh, this, this uh, session. Uh, so we are not a company, we are not a, we are not a, a university, not a typical research uh, organization. Uh, we are a European Research Infrastructure Consortium, which means uh, that we gather several research facilities and uh, we have members funding 
uh, our operations, the host countries, Czech Republic, Hungary, Italy, Lithuania, uh, Germany, and Bulgaria as observers, and now shortly becoming uh, uh, members of Bulgaria from the beginning of next year. Four members, two observers. Uh, sorry, three. Romania is not uh, listed here. Yeah. Uh, just to give you an idea of Eli Eric, meaning the two facilities, Eli Alps and Eli uh, Beamlines. Uh, this is a bit less stuff that uh, colleagues from CETEC showed. Uh, but we are happy to say that uh, uh, we have uh, th 37 nationalities uh, working in uh, Eli facilities. Uh, free from Croatia in uh, our facility in Donny Brezhani. Uh, so today uh, there's another colleague from Croatia here working in Eli from the uh, LE Beamlines, working there for, from the beginning, uh, who started his uh, academic career in PMF here in Zagreb. So if you'll have any uh, questions about specific technologies, uh, he is really the best person uh, to answer them. Uh, so I just wanted to show before we start uh, showing what we have in terms of what is our offering, what does actually high power lasers mean? Um, I'm sure that not all of you are physicists. So just to uh, provide this uh, a bit of comparison, um, when we say that we have 10 petawatt laser uh, in LE, actually the second one coming up, uh, what does that mean? Why is this uh, <laughs> best? what is currently uh, um, offered. Uh, so if you see this uh, um, uh, globe, which basically shows that uh, solar power or solar radiation to er on Earth is equivalent to 174 petawatts, and we have a laser of 10 petawatts that kind of uh, puts, puts things in perspective, I think. So the 10 petawatt laser is that you can see at the bottom of this slide in Romania currently. It's already offered to users in our open calls. And the second one should be in, in Doni Brezhani in Czechia. Um, I'll show you an example of project which is helping us get there in terms of uh, performance. So what kind of science do we do in LA, uh, in LA uh, facilities? Uh, so these are very, this is very broad range of uh, um, areas, of course, laser research, uh, radiation physics, particle acceleration, fusion energy, uh, biology and material science, which we heard uh, as examples of uh, uh, CETEC and uh, Katrin, uh, uh, astrophysics, laboratory astrophysics primarily, um, ultra-fast and attosecond dynamics, but I'll show this a bit more when I show you what is actually done in the facilities. Um, so, when you look at Eli Alp, Eli Alps, which is uh, located in Seged in Hungary, um, and let me switch straight away to their offering. This is a very busy slide, and I will definitely no go, not go into describing all the uh, lasers and secondary sources that they offer, but it gives you an idea uh, of the range of offering there. And uh, most of it is, or a lot of it is offered to users literally today. Um, they're, they're also enabling uh, uh, their uh, facilities or resources also enable um, uh, experiments, uh, delivery of experiments in uh, areas of nanoscience, radiobiology, so very different uh, material science uh, the, in terms of energy. There's a transmutation project. So, um, very broad spectrum. Eli, LEMP in Romania is a bit different, or rather opposite in terms of their offering. So, if you look at this slide, it really tells you that they have a lot less uh, laser systems, one to be precise, with two arms and different uh, experimental areas, but they do offer currently um, the only 10 petawatt uh, laser system uh, in the world. Like I said, this is already available to users. And finally, LE beamlines. So this is the facility which is located in 
Doni Brezhani, uh, just outside of Prague. And I'll focus a bit more on this because we are here uh, uh, focusing on uh, re uh, research uh, resources in Czech Republic. So uh, this facility offers maybe a most uh, diverse range of uh, laser systems and, and stations capabilities. Uh, it's focused on, let me show it here to give you an idea. So in the second line, uh, there, oops, sorry. In the second line, there are four uh, uh, lasers developed in, in house and uh, splitting uh, beams into um, five experimental holes, uh, enabling experiments in uh, diverse um, areas of uh, research. Uh, so uh, just to give you an idea, um, one of the focuses of Eli Beamlay's facility is laser plasma interaction. And this slide actually shows you or gives you an idea about the societal applications. Um, I will, again, not show specific experiments, but just to give you an idea if you're working in any of these areas or something else that we haven't had yet, we would be actually very happy to be able to conduct experiments in new areas. Particle te therapy uh, of cancer, ultrafast radiology, uh, material inspection. Um, we had a, even a project in related to cultural heritage we, because uh, enable uh, analysis without destroying uh, samples. Um, space radiation testing, so a broad range of applications. And finally, or not finally, but very important matter, um, Eli Eric, Eli Eric is a user facility. What that means is that we enable other researchers, primarily from uh, academic setting, but also uh, could be the private setting, uh, private companies, uh, to deliver their research, their experiments in our facilities. Uh, there is, uh, we are primarily focused on excellence-based access, which is free for those who are successful uh, in open calls, which are peer-reviewed by, I think, more than 50 international experts in the field. Uh, and uh, I will not, I will, for the, my understanding is that there are no companies here present today. Otherwise, uh, we would be happy to also mention the proprietary access. There is the option. So just to give you an idea what is offered, I don't think we can open the user portal to show you exactly how it looks, but just to give you a glance on the range of offering, which is quite large. So <laughs> we try to come up with this visual representation, fit, trying to fit uh, 44 <laughs> diverse configuration that are available for users. And this is primary sources, meaning lasers and uh, uh, beam lines and end stations, experimental stations. So finally, uh, I hope to make uh, uh, Ambassador slightly less unhappy <laughs> and to show that there is a uh, user from Croatia, one, but still. So hopefully we will increase this number on uh, in future calls. Uh, this was actually a participant from um, University of Osijek. And I think it was uh, in uh, for nanoscience. But, I mean, you saw the, the range is really, really big, including some countries that are mentioned today, like Taiwan, uh, 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 U.S., and uh, so on. Uh, current, uh, I said that literally today you can apply, and this is true because the fifth call, open call for users, was opened last week, and it will stay open until almost the end of October. Um, so if you go to this uh, uh, link or basically just type in Eli, Eli uh, user uh, portal, user program, you should be able to uh, access this uh, call 
And if you're worried about not understanding all the instru instrumentation or just having enough knowledge about what you can use, you can simply type the area of the research that you're interested in and uh, the filter will list what are the options that you can explore further. There is another, something else that was mentioned today by I think all Czech uh, organizations. Somebody mentioned the World Brain Drain. Uh, so we are not inviting Croatian universities to send their students to lose them, but we are actually inviting them to uh, either use events like our annual summer schools, uh, which gathered this, this, uh, this year's summer school gathered 125 students for really uh, uh, most of the uh, EU countries, but also broader. Um, and most of them uh, may not engage further with Ellie, but uh, they will gain really a valuable expertise. And some of them do collaborate with Ellie uh, in the future through internships, yes, potential jobs, but also participate in many of our projects. Uh, this is just an example of different ways the countries can, or organizations, individual organizations, can participate or uh, interact with Ali. This is a project, uh, this is a MUON project. Uh, so basically a project funded by US DARPA with the consortium of uh, several US university and uh, the only Czech or the only European organization in this project is Eli Bimlens in Doni Prejani. Um, so I'm not saying that Croatia may wish to have a dedicated project in some specific field, but the pro logic is here to show that there are really different ways of collaboration. Uh, so I would really like to invite you to join our uh, mailing list uh, <laughs> using this uh, code, but also uh, hopefully you get the chance to uh, see, browse, or maybe even take with you. Uh, it sounds, uh, the annual report sounds a bit deceiving, but actually you will get even examples of uh, concrete experiments. So all the key facts that you may need about Ellie, you'll find it here, and in the brochure that's just outside this room. Uh, and I think with this, with different ways to contact us, uh, I will uh, end this presentation and invite you to uh, contact me after after this during the lunch for any questions or or proposals that you may have. Thank you very much. Okay, so it was actually the last uh, presenter. Any questions? If there are, you are very welcome to give them. As I said, we will have a networking lunch. But before we go to the lunch, allow me, I would like also to um, briefly introduce you uh, Daniela Jovic. She is from uh, Space Manic company. And uh, basically all your colleagues from, from Brno, they probably know her because uh, she was in um, touch with the Brno-based software developers regarding the first Croatian satellite, right? So. If you, Daniela, can uh, very briefly present, uh, explain, you know, the audience what you actually, uh, what you do, and what are, what could be the, you know, possible Croatian, other Croatian partners. Thank you so much. I didn't prepare any slides, so thank you for my uh, for this opportunity. Uh, so yes, I am a, a hybrid entity here today. Uh, I live here in Croatia for the past 13 years, but I rep represent a Czech company called Space Manic, uh, and we are uh, manufacturing small satellites, nano satellites, uh, uh, or CubeSats, if you might know. And uh, we have uh, many partners here, although they are probably more in touch with our Czech office. Uh, but uh, there's, there's Statec and there's uh, VUT, and we stand behind uh, one third of all Czech satellites uh, ever built. Uh, that's uh, BDSat, for, for instance, for the company BD Sensors. Uh, currently, we are building BrnoSat, uh, which is a, co a collaboration between Brno Planetarium and also um, our company and uh, Czech Aerospace Research Center, and so on. Uh, and uh, I'm leading a project here in Croatia that is a non-profit project. Uh, 
that wants to put Croatia to space because we have uh, so far not have had any any satellites uh, yet. Uh, so Czech Republic is an excellent, uh, I would say, a, a example of, of how space technologies are really pushing the economy further. So I'm very happy and I'll be very happy to talk to everyone here um, about space technologies, possible space projects and uh, how, how we can get uh, each other's technology to space. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Daniela. So uh, I know that uh, you know, lunch is if expecting us. So uh, Milan, uh, the ambassador, would like to add something. So thank you once again. Uh, I'm uh, coming from OSIC, from Faculty of Electrical uh, Engineering, Computer Science and Information Technology as part of uh, University of OSIC. So uh, we cover a wide uh, range of uh, scientific fields in electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, particularly, uh, we see opportunities uh, to collaborate with uh, your research institutes in the field of uh, microelectronics, uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, some uh, innovative uh, solutions in the field of automotive industry with emphasis on uh, uh, computer science and uh, communication systems in, in uh, automobiles, which we, uh, we also cover. So uh, I'm looking forward for the networking opportunity uh, shortly after. And uh, I believe that uh, we will cooperate in the future. So thank you. Okay, so uh, now you know you are kindly invited, you know, to have uh, this networking lunch, which is uh, next uh, next next door actually. You know, I think the dean will lead us lead us there. <laughs> yeah. So you can continue the networking discussion during the lunch, and as I said, you are all invited, you know, to the evening networking networking reception to the residence of the ambassador, starting at uh, 6 p.m. tonight. So I would like to thank uh, everybody very much uh, for uh, for this uh, for your participation here. I would like to thank um, Mr. Dean to you for and your team for organi organizing together with the embassy. You know this, so appreciate it very much.